You can get the cards you need for today's Budget Magic deck and support the show from this episode's sponsor, Card Kingdom. Just follow the link in the description box down below. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. So this week, we are heading to Standard to play a deck I'm calling Golden Journey, and I'm pretty excited about this one, because we are built around one card that I love in Journey to Eternity, but one card that I didn't really think was playable, but I'm coming around to in this build in specific, and that is Golden Guardian. So we're kind of like this sacrifice-y, grindy, value-y, some reanimator synergies thrown in mid-rangey Abzan deck, and I think that this deck is really fun. I'm not sure if it's super, super competitive, but it's competitive enough, and it is really unique and fun to play. So as you can see, 79 bucks in the paper world, 17 ticks on Magic Online, so super cheap, especially on Magic Online. So a quick reminder before we break down Golden Journey, if you enjoy this deck and you enjoy Budget Magic in general, it would be amazing of you. If you could take a quick second, click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So, to really understand Golden Journey, we gotta start off with the two namesake cards. So, first off, we have Golden Guardian, a 4 mana 4-4 four, four with Defender, with an ability to pay to and fight another creature we control, and then if it dies, it comes back into play Transform. Dies after fighting, that is. And the Transform version of Golden Guardian is a land that taps for 2 mana of any color, which is already pretty powerful, a lot of mana, and then we can pay for and make a 4-4 four, four colorless Golem artifact creature token. So the unique thing about Golden Guardian is, unlike a lot of the flip lands, this one is not legendary. So we can play a whole bunch of them. We can have multiple gold forge garrisons to just make tons of mana. So since we are abusing this creature that wants to fight our own stuff, one of the sweetest synergies in the deck is Journey to Eternity. So we're kind of like abs and flip lands in some sense. So Journey to Eternity goes on a creature. When that creature dies, it comes back into play. Journey to Eternity transforms into Adsel, a land that can reanimate something for five mana. So in theory, if we can, let's say, get Journey on another creature, we can use our Golden Guardian to fight that creature, which flips the Journey to Eternity, giving us this huge reanimation value land. And maybe if we can kill our Golden Guardian, like perhaps with Hidden Stockpile or Yohanian Dying Partisan to sacrifice it, we also get to flip our Golden Guardian, make a bunch of golems. So we're kind of just trying to sacrifice our own stuff, grind out some value, Value and just kind of overwhelm our opponent with this little bits of value. So, as I mentioned a minute ago, Hidden Stockpile is one of the key cards in this deck. It gives us a one mana sacrifice outlet. We are not looking to go wide. We're not playing Anointed Processions. It's a very different style of Hidden Stockpile deck. Rather than trying to use Hidden Stockpile as a game winning card on its own, Hidden Stockpile is in our deck because it's very synergistic. It lets us scry through our deck to find our combo pieces, our Golden Guardians, our Journey to Eternities, our creatures, while also just giving us some chump blockers, giving us an easy way to flip Journey to Eternity. Like, that's one of the challenges of Journey to Eternity, is if you just play it on a creature, there's Ixalan's Binding and Cast Outs and Unsummons and so many things that can go wrong, but with a Hidden Stock pile out, you just play it, immediately can sack it, flip it, and then you have Edsel, and Edsel's insane. Same with Golden Guardian. It allows us to fight a small creature with Golden Guardian. Sure, maybe we lose our Servo token, but then we can just sacrifice the Golden Guardian, flip it around, have a land that's just making a steady stream of 4-4s. Four Yahani's just a one-of, but it gives us another backup sacrifice outlet. The rest of the deck is where the grindy support card value comes in. So Merfolk, Branchwalker, Seeker, Squire are, are ways of stocking the graveyard primarily. Give us on-curve things to play on turn two. We can always mill over big creatures that we draw with the explore ability. And then once we get our Adsel, we can get it back. Getting these creatures back with Adsel isn't all that bad. So it gives us some value there. We also have a bunch of of kind of finishers, I guess. So in the late game, in the mid game, we get to the point where we have our Atzel, we have tons of mana, we have our hidden stockpile, so we can do things like Ravenous Chupacabra, kill our opponent's best thing, sack Ravenous Chupacabra to hidden stockpile to get a servo token, to scry one, and then just reanimate the Chupacabra, kill something else, do that every single turn. Just keep sacking, reanimating. If we do it with Noxious Gear Hulk, we're gaining life along the way as well. So we can kind of just lock decks out of the game with this sacrifice, reanimate, sacrifice, reanimate, 
Reanimate, Sacrifice, Reanimate plan. Because we have so much mana thanks to all of our flip lands, free Sacrifice outlets, and a really good shell for flipping Journey to Eternity. We also have Gonti Lord of Luxury, Arborback Stomper. These are similar. These are other creatures that we want to just keep sacking, reanimating, sacking, reanimating. Gonti is like Ravenous Chupacabra, but for control matchups, where we'd rather be attacking our opponent's stack, generating card advantage than killing creatures. Arborback Stomper can be game over against aggro, just five life a turn. Get it back, block something, gain some life, sack it, get a servo, do it again, do it again, do it again. Five life a turn is a lot of life when you're doing it again and again. We also have one Razaketh the Foul Blooded. Maybe not ideal for the deck. It's really expensive, but if we can mill it over with our Explorer creatures, really good reanimation target lets us tutor up our one ofs, our removal, really get the combo going. Plus, thanks to all the mana we get from our flip lands, like remember, Golden Guardian flips into a non legendary land that taps for two mana. So if we flip a Golden Guardian or two, it's definitely not outside the realm of possibility that we can just hard cast our Razaketh and really go to town with the tutoring, having this huge flyer. Liliana Death's Majesty gives us a back up way to generate card advantage by making zombie tokens, reanimate some stuff if we don't happen to have Ad Soul or if it gets hit by Field of Ruin. So just a solid one of in the deck. We also have Growing Rights of Itlamog, which probably looks weird, and it doesn't do anything super specific, but we make servos, we have a reasonable amount of creatures. Growing Rights of Itlamog helps us dig for our Chupacabras, our Gontis, our Gearhawks, our big demons, and then occasionally we'll flip it around and give us even more mana for making more 4-4s four with our Golden Guardian and for reanimating stuff with Adsol. So just another solid flip land, cycles through our deck to find our pieces. Otherwise, removal wise, walk the plank for the early game, one Fumigate, a couple of Ixalans binding to deal with Scarab Gods and Hazorats. Mana base, Evolving Wild and Field of Ruin are sweet because they give us free revolt triggers with Hidden Stockpile. So we play Hidden Stockpile, maybe we don't want to sack anything or use all of our mana so we don't have the mana to sacrifice something. Evolving Wilds, Field of Ruin gets us a free revolt trigger, also fixes our mana. Foul Orchard, Sun Petal Grove is duels, bunch of basic land, sideboard for aggro we have baffling end for more removal, sunscorch champion for life gain, fumigate is a wrath, cataclysmic gear hulk, I guess it's like kind of for aggro but it's really for like token decks, go wide decks that are putting a bunch of tokens anointed processions, hidden stockpiles that kind of stuff, making tons of creatures good against like vampires even that are going really wide, those style of decks cataclysmic super good, even more devastating when we can just keep sacking and reanimating it every single turn to just like lock those decks out of the game, for control matchups, Duress, Lost Legacy to attack our opponent's hand and deck, Ixalan's Binding to deal with Scarab Gods and Hazorats, and then Dead Eye Tracker as a Graveyard Hate spell. And that is Golden Journey for Standard, and that's our budget magic deck for this week. So, I love this deck. It just plays so many cards that I enjoy. Journey to Eternity, Hidden Stockpile, the Golden Guardian is sweet, the plan of winning with these powerful flip lands. We're playing ones that just haven't seen that much play yet. Guardians of Illamok, Golden Guardian no one plays and the shell is pretty reasonable we sometimes are a little too slow we occasionally get run over by aggro but we can grind with the best of them we just have so much value in this deck that once we get going we are really hard to stop in the upside of like journey to eternity and golden guardian once they flip they're a lot harder to deal with than scarab god like journey to eternity is similar to scarab god except ixlon's binding doesn't ruin our plans other removal spells for oscar's contempt doesn't ruin our plans. Sure, some decks have Field of Ruin, but that's a lot less common than Creature Removal. Everyone's prepared for the Scarab God, but not everyone's prepared for Journey to Eternity and Golden Guardian and Growing Rights of Itlamok. So, the overload on the flip lands, the really powerful flip lands, seems really powerful, really sweet. So, I think the deck's fun, it's pretty competitive, and it's just like a blast to play. So, I'm gonna stop going on and on. Let's get to the video so you can see how it plays. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy the gameplay and I will talk to you soon. All right, Budget Magic time. Playing some Journey, Golden Journey, in Standard, and I uh, yeah, will try this. I mean, we got a okay-ish curve. None of our combo pieces, but we'll give it a shot. It could work out. All right, so let's follow Orchard and pass the turn. Swamp for our opponent and passes. Well, let's just planes and get down Hidden Stockpile. Ship the turn. Planes for our opponent. And passes. Well, let's play Hidden Stockpile. <laughs> Pass the turn. Come on, Journey to Eternity! <laughs> oh, we have the sack outlets ready and raring to go. Planes for our opponent. And Queen's Commission. 
Yep, opponent passes. Well, I'm not gonna binding anything. Let's play Branch Walker. Sack Branch Walker. Walk the plank to the bottom. Go exploring. Golden Guardian. Hmm. It's not a land. We really do kind of need a land. I think we got to put it to the graveyard for now. Play a forest. Pass the turn. Get some servos. Planes for our opponent. And there's Radiant Destiny. Well, probably just going to have to Ixalan's binding that. Hopefully while also drawing a land. Opponent gets in for four. Yep. Uh, let's block and sack one servo to try to find a land. If we lose the other one, that would be disappointing. Block sack. Yeah, there's the fatal push. We will keep Evolving Wilds. That's actually a pretty good one because it lets us Ixalan's Binding, the Radiant Destiny, and also get some servos for free because we get to trigger revolt. So sack Evolving Wilds. Grab a... I guess we probably want the planes just in case for our fumigate if we happen to draw it so get some servos evolving wilds for our opponent cracks it probably looking for yeah another swamp opponent getting frisky uh we will take it for now we actually want to make sure a creature lives here queen's commission well, opponents just token in it up hmm well maybe we just draw yeah let's draw oh it is our fumigate that'll come in helpful eventually how do we want to do this? Well, that's Ravenous Chupacabra. Kill a vampire. Go attacking. Sack one of our servos to get some more servos. Opponent's down to one card, though. Uh, yeah, we're going to keep Evolving Wilds. Pass the turn. Evolving Wilds gives us more free triggers, so we can, like, Arbor Back Stomper plus get servos next turn. Opponent plays a land. No attacks. Well, draw Evolving Wilds. Go attacking with our servos. Play Arbor Back Stomper. Up to 21. Play Evolving Wilds. Crack Evolving Wilds. Grab a Swamp. And pass the turn. Get some servos. And I think we're in good shape. We'd love... Now we would love a Golden Guardian. Or a Journey to Eternity. Either one of those would be pretty spectacular. Let's upkeep Zack. There's Golden Guardian. Well, get in with Stomper, and I guess we get in with our Servos. Hit our opponent. And we're just going to run it out there. If our opponent kills it, they kill it. If they don't kill it, next turn we get to flip it, and then then life is pretty set. Okay, more vampires. So many 1-1s one -ones with lifelink. Opponent passing. Well, let's... Uh, I guess we don't need to upkeep it. Well, yeah, let's upkeep it. Golden Guardian, fight a Servo. Sack Golden Guardian, flip Golden Guardian, and this is what our deck is kind of trying to do. Ooh, Growing Rights! Yes, on top. Definitely on top. Play Growing Rights of Itlamok. Oh, are we overtapping? We are. Play Growing Rights. Go digging. Razaketh! Oh, man. We are seeing our deck in full force. Uh, yeah, we will just pass the turn. F do some flippage. Get some servos. And life is spectacular. I guess we should have left up... Oh, we should have left this up because we would have been able to to make a token because we can tap this for so much mana. And our post groups it up. Ooh! Hoo, 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 hoo. No journey to eternity, but we got the golden part of our deck going. Uh, yeah. Well, bring in Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. Bring in Fumigate. Bring in... Hmm. That might be about it. Probably go down the Razaketh, I guess. And what else? What else? What else? What else? Maybe Ganti. Let's uh, let's give it a shot like that. Um, all right, this sounds pretty good. I mean, we got a hidden stockpile. We got a Fumigate, which is a nice catch-all. Field of Ruin can be relevant in this matchup. Sun Petal Grove, go. Field of Ruin takes care of a flipped Legion's Landing. Evolving Wilds. Opponent cracks it. Gets a Swamp and passes. We'll play a Swamp, run out Hidden Stockpile. We're doing a good job getting these double Hidden Stockpile draws. Hidden Stockpile is a good way of keeping up with our opponent token-wise. Alright, ooh, Demystify. Opponent's going deep. We'll play Hidden Stockpile, play Sun Petal Grove, pass the turn. Opponent passing. Hmm. 
I'm tempted to just Field of Ruin, but it's probably greedy to waste it. Let's just play a Branch Walker, go exploring, get a land, sacrifice Branch Walker, scry. Really? Alright, opponent's got a cast out. Boo! Boo! Hiss! <laughs> Well, Forest definitely to the bottom. Play Sun Petal Grove, pass the turn. Well, eventually we'll find Ixalan's Binding to get rid of that. That was an annoying turn of events, though. Call the fees for our opponent, making some 1 1s, and passing. Well, let's play Branch Walker, go exploring. Play Seeker Squire, go exploring. Leave Journey on top, play Swamp, and pass the turn. So now we're on the sub game of trying to find a way to flip this journey. It's a little harder considering our opponent got rid of our hidden stockpiles. Radiant Destiny, gonna pump the dorks. <sighs> that might force us to fumigate at some point. Opponent, no attacks. Well, let's play the planes and run out Golden Guardian. Pass the turn. So, well, we'll see what our opponent does. We have the possibility of flipping this journey to eternity, depending on what our opponent gets. Alright, Legion's Lieutenant, pumping the dorks. Queen's Commission, still pumping the dorks. Bonnet, big attack. Well, block, block, block. Actually, <clears throat> one, two, three, hmm. So I think what we want to do, block, block. We're going to take six. So we should block like this. Take, uh, all right, so kill a couple things. We're gonna fight, yeah, I guess this works. Fight the Branch Walker. Golden Guardian dies, transforms. Take a bit of damage. And now we have enough mana that we can play Journey to Eternity. Use our golden, wow, use our mana to fumigate Blow up the board, flip journey, get back Seeker Squire, Mill Seeker Squire, play Field of Ruin, pass the turn. What a turn! What a turn! Whoa! Whoa! That was one of the better turns I've had in standard, period. No, no exceptions. Opponent's passing. Well, Cataclysmic? That actually seems insane. Yeah, let's, uh, let's run out Cataclysmic. Keep, keep. Wow. Wow, this is our deck at fullest of full power. Follow that up with Walk the Plank on Legion's Lieutenant. Get it with the Seeker Squire, and I think this one's over, boys and girls. I think this one might be a little bit over. Opponent plays a Swamp. And last card, Martyr of Dusk. Well, we just have too much land value. Field of Ruin, play Field of Ruin, go attacking. And now we can just start making 4-4s four or reanimating. Hit our opponent. Down to 17. Opponent just finds a land. And yeah, I think that, that's that got to about do it. Opponent flooding out. Well, we need to we need to do this, because I've never seen the 4-4. Four four. Whew! Achieved. Evolving Wilds. Well, go attacking. Hit our opponent for a bunch. Opponent going to do some blocking. Gets a Vampire. Well, play Evolving Wilds. Pass the turn. And I wonder if our opponent even has outs to this. I mean, there's Legion's Landing. Makes a chump blocker. Opponent's fighting the good fight. Uh, let's reanimate this time. Get back a Branch Walker. Crack Evolving Wilds. Get a land. Uh, I don't even think we need Ixalan's Binding now. We're so far ahead. And that is... That is a clencher. Growing Rights. Goes digging. Another Golden Guardian. Put the rest to the bottom. Play Golden Guardian. Fight Cataclysmic. Flip Golden Guardian. Do some attacking. Flip our growing rights. And pass the turn. We can make a 4-4. Four four, or we can reanimate. And, I mean, that's just like... That is the dream. That is our deck functioning on all cylinders. Pony scoops it up. That is the Golden Journey. That is it. That is exactly it. Sweet. Alright, Budgie Magic time. Playing some... Golden Journey in Standard, and uh, we'll try this. I mean, we got things we can play. Chupacabra, Seeker Squire, seems reasonable. Foul Orchard for our opponent. Well, let's start our exploration with Seeker Squire. I guess we'll keep another one. 
We wanna. I think we wanna wait until the following turn to hidden stockpile. Because if we wait, we can field of ruin, blow up a land, get our white source, play hidden stockpile, immediately get a token for free. All right, opponent fatal pushes. Yep. Wow. Commune with dinosaurs. Jun dinosaurs. Takes a foul orchard. Opponent passes. Well, let's run out Seeker Squire. Play a swamp and pass the turn. Opponent. Thunderherd migration reveals Ripjaw Raptor. This is an interesting dinosaur deck. And a tap land. All right, so we are going to go with our plan, I think. Uh, oh, man, so close. Well, play Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin, blow up. Actually, I guess we should attack first in case they get Black Source and Fatal Push. So get in with Seeker Squire. Hit our opponent down to 18. Field of Ruin, blow up Oasis. Grab a Plains. Play Hidden Stockpile. Get a token for free. And now we might be set up to... Might be set up to flip journey. Like, if our opponent just taps out here... Well, we'll see. Ripjaw Raptor. Hmm. Well, now we gotta decide if it's worth risking it with Fatal Push Mana up. I think the answer is no. I think what we wanna do is just... Play Chupacabra. Kill Ripjaw Raptor. Play the tap land, get in with our stuff. We're giving up a free scry to play the tap land, but I think it's worthwhile. Hit our opponent down to 16. Pass the turn. And if our opponent ever taps out, then we're definitely in business to flip journey. Come on. Oh, here. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> game. It's game. Oh, journey on Chupacabra is so good here. Uh, so we will... Journey to Eternity on Chupacabra. We will sacrifice Chupacabra. We will flip our journey. We will get back Chupacabra. We will kill Ripjaw Raptor. And that is what we call... Oh, man, and a Golden Guardian. That is what we call blo a blowout. <laughs> ah, Journey. It is it is pretty sweet. Pass the turn. Get a Servo, because why not? And next turn, we get to flip Golden Guardian, and then... Yeah, I mean, this is what our deck's trying to do. Like, we are seeing exactly what the plan is coming to fruition. Walking Ballista, sure. I mean, they don't even really want to kill our stuff because... Ooh, Tetsamok. That is annoying. Although, it's not that annoying because our stuff comes back from the graveyard. Ponent. Passing. Play a Swamp. So I think we want to play Golden Guardian. Uh, fight our Chupacabra. If our opponent would like to cash in their Ballista, that's still a win for us. So Chupacabra's gonna die, but it's in the graveyard for Atzel, and we flip our Golden Guardian, and we get a Servo. Wow, they are going to. Alright, so, yep. Well, this is still a huge win for us. We traded Walking Ballista for that activation, and our opponent's still not in very good shape. And we get a Servo. Well, we're going to go attacking, hit our opponent, pass the turn. And now we got Chupacabra to reanimate whenever we see fit. Are you going to Fatal Push something? I mean, they can Fatal Push Golden Guardian, but then we just fight something. Wow, okay. Well, that is fine with us. We will fight. It dies. It flips. Yup. Well, that's what we were trying to do all along. We get a Servo. And now we just start making 4-4s, four start reanimating stuff. We have the hidden stockpile so we can keep sacking Chupacabra, so we can just kill something every turn. Oh man, this is sweet. This is sweet. This deck is... This deck is sweet. Alright, there's... Sexy Tetsy. <laughs> Doesn't blow up anything. It does pump the Drover. Phone it. Getting frisky. Uh, yeah, let's block Scry, I think. We have so much mana, so many creatures. I think it's worth just making sure we draw well. Uh, we'll keep Branch Walker. Branch Walker is pretty good. So we draw Branch Walker, we play Branch Walker, keep Hidden Stockpile on top. Um, yeah, I guess we just pass. Start doing our our land stuff, Drawer Over of the Mighty. I mean, unless our opponent has Graveyard Hater Land Destruction, seems like it should be hard for them to win from here. Petsamok, yeah, well, we'll just, we will just reanimate. 
a Chupacabra. And kill the Tetsumok. Last card, Veraska's Contempt. Well, we kind of want this Chupacabra to live, so we will sacrifice it. We will keep Hidden Stockpile still. And yeah, we're pretty close to just having our opponent, like, hard locked out of this game. So play Hidden Stockpile. Go attacking. Opponent, gonna take the beats. I'll sack a servo. Yeah, let's keep Foul Orchard. And then just reanimate Seeker Squire. Draw the Foul Orchard. Play the Foul Orchard, pass the turn. We can never really have too much mana. Because the more mana we have, the more we can scry, the more we can make 4-4s, four the more we can activate, do multiples of those things in the same turn, and our opponent realizing the direness of their situation <laughs> scoops it up. All right, so opponent's playing, like, green-black dinosaurs. I think we just bring in another Fumigate and go down maybe, like, one Growing Rites. Ixalan's Binding's fine. Tracker, no. Duress, no. Legacy, no. Baffling End, eh. Doesn't hit the most important things. Champion. I could see Cataclysmic being alright in this scenario. Maybe over, like, Razakath. Maybe we do that. Let's go Cataclysmic over Razakath. And we will try it like that. That felt pretty good, though. Alright, opponent's on the play. And, yeah, this end's fine. I mean, no real combo pieces, but we got mana. We got some exploration. Swamp for our opponent. And passes. Well, Foul Orchard, go. More lands aren't super helpful at this point. Opponent. Forest. And passing. Liliana's pretty good. Let's play the planes. Run out. I guess Branch Walker. Go exploring. Alright, get a land out of the way. Well, at least we're not drawing that land next turn. So it's still kind of a win. Four is for our opponent. And thrashing Brontodon. And passes. Well, let's Seeker Squire. Go exploring. So many lands. Play Sun Petal Grove, pass the turn. Four is for our opponent. Well, there goes Liliana. Or Fumigate. I actually don't know what our opponent takes here. Those are both... They both seem like really good cards in this matchup. Decides on Liliana. I guess that's good after Fumigate, because we can get back our stuff. Little surprised our opponent would bring Indress against us. I guess I saw a Journey to Eternity, but... A lot of the things they were losing to were not things that Duress really helps against. Opponent. Gonna get frisky with uh, Thrashy. Yep. Well, we're just going to take it for now. Hopefully we draw not lands. Opponent passing. Well, go attacking. Hit our opponent. That is more lands. Play Seeker Squire. We find. Fumigate. I guess it's nice protection if our opponent has another duress. Otherwise, we'd rather be finding action spells. Let's put it on top, play Evolving Wilds, and pass the turn. We can delay our decision. Delay our decision for a little bit. See what our opponent plays here. See if they cast a Duress. Opponent plays a Tapland. Gets in with Brontodon. Alright, we'll take three. Down to 14. <sighs> Alright, we're gonna crack. Crack Evolving Wilds. Grab a forest, I guess. More Seeker Squires. Well, attack with everything. Hit our opponent. <laughs> we have not drawn any of our good cards. Play a Seeker Squire. We're just on the all explorer plan. Come on, big creature. Ugh. Foul Orchard, go. So many lands. <laughs> We've gone through 10 lands out of 60 cards. I mean, we're not in horrible shape, but boy, I wish some of these cards were action. Oasis for our opponent. The Liliana would have been super helpful. Opponent. Getting frisky. Down to 11. Yup. I guess our opponent hasn't been doing much either. Opponent passes. Well, go attacking. I mean, I think technically we're winning this race. Play Field of Ruin. I guess we just kill the Oasis. Get a land out of our deck. It will be a Plains. 
And pass the turn. I mean, our opponent kind of has to do something. This racing with just a thrashing Bronted on plan is not really working for our opponent. Foul Orchard. More Brontodons. Opponent passing. All right, now we're to the stalemate. Ooh, choops. I think we keep going for it. One, two, three, four. Play choops. Blow up a Brontodon. Opponent said the flood is real, and I agree. <laughs> we have both drawn a ton of lands this game. Tag with everything. Yes, opponent gets to eat one of our creatures, but puts our opponent to two. Pass the turn. Another land for our opponent. There's Ripjaw Raptor. Man, I wish there was a way we could journey. This Brontodon is actually a big problem. And we got the GG's. Opponent just does not have enough blockers. Well, we both flooded out, and I guess we flooded out more effectively. I think Seeker Squire and our Explore creatures were a huge difference there because we each drew an insane amount of lands, but we actually drew uh, a couple extra cards. And our post groups it up. Sweet. We got there. Uh, well, game one was impressive. Game two, yeah. Not really an exciting game. Just kind of a slog, but we still got there. We won the flood out battle. All right, budget magic time. We are taking the golden journey <laughs> in standard. And this hand is a little slow, but we will regret keeping this hand immediately. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's got some power, and we could draw some early game stuff, but... If our opponent's playing an aggro deck, this hand might just be a smidge on the slow side. Swamp Goo. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't technically even have double black. We somehow have two planes. Dragon Skull Summit. And Scrap Heap Scrounger. Yeah, opponent's got a fast clock. Guessing we might not be fast enough here. Gets in. Another card under Bomb at Courier. Come on, deck. Give us a two drop. Ugh, the Sun Petal Grove go. Looking grim. Looking grim. Yeah. Well, opponent on the play. We kept a slow hand. They have a fast hand. If we had known our opponent was playing aggro, uh, would have shipped. Ether Sphere Harvester. 100% would have shipped if we knew they were playing aggro. If we draw a Black Source here, oh, not that we want to draw more lands, but Chupacabra, Chupacabra... Noxious Gear Hulk seems kind of reasonable. Opponent hits us for four. If we just draw nothing, though. <laughs> oh, that was a dagger he draw. Planes go. Uh, looking like we might just not play a spell before we lose. I guess the good news is we can scoop and our opponent won't get much information. Opponent's going to refill their hand. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's over. Well, I guess we have one Fumigate. And I don't even know if that's enough, honestly. Three, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we're just going to concede here. We can't win from here. Well, yeah. Should not have kept that slow of a hand if we knew what our opponent was doing. Bring in Fumigate. Bring in Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. Baffling and Sunscourge Champion. Go down one Growing Rights. Go down Razakath. Go down... Ganti, go down three more cuts. Maybe go down Yeheni, Liliana, and one Golden Guardian. All right, let's try it like that. We're on the play this game, which should be helpful. Ugh. All right, we'll keep it. Mana is still a little clunky. One of the, the downsides of budget. I guess we can get a Swamp here and then just Field of Ruin Seeker Squire. And maybe explore into a land. Opponent has the Bonded Courier. Well, grab a Swamp. Opponent going to get in. 4-1. We get to play a blocker, though, which is certainly a big deal. Down to 19. Opponent passes. Well, Field of Ruin. Seeker Squire. Go exploring. Hopefully just hit a land. Well, definitely milling Arbor back Stomper, because we really would like a land. Sunscorch Champion is good. Unfortunately, Sunpetal Grove coming into play tapped here. Dragon Skull Summit. 
And Scrappy Scrounger. Opponent. Passing. Land? More tap lands. Well, play Sun Petal Grove, pass the turn. We're just gonna. Just gonna play some tap lands. A few little tap lands here. Playing a bit off curve. Opponent. Earthshaker Kendra. Well, that lets our opponent get in an attack, which is good for our opponent, although we get to start doing things next turn. Like, we're taking a big hit, but then we gain back some life. We have another blocker. Opponent, I mean, why not get in with Bomb at Courier? I'm confused. Opponent passes. Well, play Sunscorch Champion. Gain a bit of life. Play Foul Orchard. Pass the turn. Next turn, we can actually Branch Walker and walk the plank if we want to. All right, opponent finds land number three. Fatal push. And more scrap heap scroungers. That's a lot of scrounging. Opponent gets in for three. Well, we will take it for now. Come on. Land off the top would be nice. Opponent passes. There's a land. Hmm. Do we still just branch walker? I think so. Let's branch walker. Go exploring. Hmm, Journey to Eternity. It's so good, but it's potentially slow. I would love to get down Noxious Gear Hulk. On the other hand, if we get Journey on a creature, it's going to be hard for our opponent to attack. They're going to have to leave up removal. I mean, Journey's in the name. We're going to keep it. Play the land. Walk the plank, Scrap Heap. And pass the turn. And see what our opponent does. Swamp. Dread Wander, two cards in hand. There's Disintegration. Well, that's a good one for our opponent. Gets to get in for five? Uh, Let's block. Oh, this is bad. We might just be dead here. So kill Scrap Heap, take two. We're going to have to shuffle away Journey to Eternity. So blow up Dragon Skull Summit. We're hoping that we just draw an untap land. And we can get back this Sunscorch Champion, and then next turn, Noxious Gear Hulk. Growing Rights is not that. Well, play Growing Rights. Yeah, we're dead. Dead, dead, dead. Opponent just had... Oh, there goes our Fumigate. Pass the turn. Yeah, I think we're just too slow now. We take five, and we're dead to basically anything. And especially Hazard at the Fervent. All right, well. Yep, good hand. Good hand. Ah, the clunkiness of infinite tap lands. All right, budget magic time. Playing some, oh no, hidden journey. Journey to, not, uh, golden journey. <laughs> I was thinking a hidden stockpile. Oh, this hand has so much of what we want. Also, Razakath, I guess we just gotta ship it. I was thinking if we draw one land, then we have two explorer creatures and hidden stockpile. So if we draw one land, this hand could actually be really good. But it is a risky keep. We are a 25 land deck, and if anything, we tend to flood out with the deck. And we are on the draw, so we have two turns, 24 lands in our deck. We need to draw one land of basically any color, any land. You know what? I'm kind of talking myself into this. Oh, do I gotta pull up the calculator? All right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. We're going to calculate. If it's over 50%, I will keep it. If it's under 50%, I'll probably ship it. So uh, 50, 53 cards in our deck. We get to draw two cards. Uh, we have 24 lands left in our deck. We get to draw two cards. We need one land. 50.5%. All right, keep. 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 <laughs> We're trusting in you, Math. We're trusting in you. <laughs> Actually, it's like 70% that we draw one or more. So it's like 50.5% we draw exactly one, 20% that we draw two. Drown Catacombs. Well, let's see if the math helps us. That's a Seeker Squire. All right, well, we get one more draw. The problem is, now our odds, I'm sure, have shifted to 46%. Cascading Cataracts. Ooh, that is some spice. Thematic Compass. Something spicy is happening. Come on, math. Be good to us. Oh, God. The math betrayed us. The math betrayed us. 70%. 70%. Ah. Uh, yep. Well, at least Razakas a good thing to discard. Another compass. Oh, come on, Dak. Our opponent missed a land drop, too. Please. All right. Field of Ruin. 
That works. That's a clunky land, but it does let us play Seeker Squire. Land? Uh, yeah, sorry, Chupacabra. To the graveyard. Pass the turn. This is fine, though, because worst case, we get another Seeker Squire next turn to go digging. Once our opponent gets one more land, they're in business, because they can just compass like crazy. This Cascading Cataracts is looking a little funny, though. Opponent passing. Land? Oh, my goodness. No, not like this. Get in with Seeker Squire. Opponent takes it. No counters. No counters, please. Land, please. Oh, my God almighty. Pass the turn. Well, Fury not paying off. Holy... <laughs> There's a Fatal Bush. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh. Well, did our opponent hit their land? They did. So now our opponent's in the land business. Oh, we desperately need to draw an untapped land this turn. That was unfortunate. Opponent's going to Doomfall us. Yeah, you got tons of options. Many, many, many options. Takes our journey to eternity. Come on, deck. Well, that's not pretty. Get in with Seeker Squire. Play the Swamp. Pass the turn. We are doing it the hardest way possible. If our opponent was just hitting their land drops, we'd be in horrible shape. But the fact that they had a slow start too, well, now they're drawing their lands. Dead lands. Well, unfortunately, we need to kill this arch and get a forest. Opponent's floating mana. Get a forest. Ugh, the math betrayed us. Tutors up a land. Yup, of course. We're probably in pretty rough shape, honestly. Gets a swamp. Well, we do draw land finally. Get in with Seeker Squire. Play Branch Walker. Go exploring. Branch Walker to the graveyard. Play Foul Orchard. Pass the turn. Swamp for our opponent. Gift to Paradise. Gain some life. Yeah, something big and horrible is going to happen here before long. Gift of Paradise. Gain some life. Well, opponent passes. We'll play Golden Guardian. Go attacking. And see what happens. Opponent's got gobs of mana. Gobs and gobs. Gobs and oodles. Hour of Promise. I mean, I guess the good news is our opponent's down to one actual card in hand. They get some zombies. Get a Scavenger Grounds. Ugh. That is a little annoying. That's going to keep our graveyard in check forever. Doomfall. Oh my goodness! Well, I guess that's a good last card for the opponent to have. Flips and flips. Yup, yup. We draw... Evolving Wilds. We'll play Evolving Wilds. Opponent's got no card draw. Huh. Well, let's play Golden Guardian. Pass the turn. See what our opponent draws. Hopefully nothing. That is the traditional ramp deck problem. Alright, Deadlands, a Guardian. Moment of Craving, the Guardian. Well, I guess that's pretty good for our opponent. Well, Crack of Alving Wilds. Grab a Plains. Play Hidden Stockpile. Play Evolving Wilds. Crack of Alving Wilds. Get a Plains. No attacks. Get a servo. The scavenger grounds is going to make it hard for us to flip if our opponent leaves that up because it it goes to the graveyard then returns. Opponent passing. Well, let's upkeep scry. Valving wilds to the bottom. Yeheni, undying partisan. We'll play Yeheni. Uh, yeah, let's. Ugh. Let's pass. Next turn, I think we can start attacking. Man, one of those Journey to Eternities would be sweet. Opponent. Passing. Leaving up the Scavenger Grounds. Well, no Scry this turn. I don't mind Walk the Plank. Kill a Zombie. This opens up some attacking. Get a counter on your Henny. Go attacking. Get some pressure on our opponent. Opponent blocks. Yup. We trade. Opponent untaps. Untaps. Sure. Get a counter on your Henny. Get a servo. And pass the turn. 
I mean, we need our opponent to tap out of the scavenger grounds, and then we can go to town with Golden Guardian. Or we need to draw our other Field of Ruin. Opponent. Passing. Yeah, we draw. Foul Orchard. Well, go attacking. Opponent. Vraska's Contempt. Well, we will sack you, Henny. Definitely keeping Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin gives us a way to flip our Golden Guardian next turn. So if our opponent doesn't draw something good this turn, we get to flip next turn. Untaps, untaps, takes one. And then we just have a steady stream of Golden Guardian tokens. And hopefully that's enough. Pass the turn. Get a servo. This is a big turn. This is a super big turn. Opponent. Two cards in hand. Gift of Paradise. That's not what we were scared of. And passes. All right, that's good. That is good. We draw our Field of Ruin. We play our Field of Ruin. We Field of Ruin the Scavenger Grounds. Opponent's going to exile the Graveyards. Yup. We go attacking. Opponent untaps and untaps. Yup, takes two. So now we fight a Servo. Zach Golden Guardian to do some scrying. And now we start making four fours. Gold Forge Garrison. Scry gives us. Uh, Journey to Eternity is great. That is the next best card we could draw. Get a Servo. All right, pass the turn. I mean, our opponent could have removal. What did they find? Hour of Promise. Okay. Tutor's up. Do they have Field of Ruins? They do have a Field of Ruins. Ugh. All right. Well, opponent passes. We draw Journey. Journey our Seeker Squire. Really? Their last card was another removal spell? Oh, opponent running well. Running well. All right. Well, there's more where that came from. Hit our opponent. Opponent is out of action. They drew just enough removal spells to stay in the game, unfortunately. But it is definitely far from over. The scary part is eventually our opponent will probably draw something big. Hit our opponent. Down to 16. The fact that they could tutor up Field of Ruin is pretty annoying. Oh, that journey. That journey would have been so helpful. There's the Field of Ruin, of course. Well, we will make a 4-4. Four, four. Yep. We get a land out of our deck. It's a forest. Opponent plays a tap land. Out of action. Come on, deck. Give us our last journey. Give us our last journey. Give us something good. Opponent's going to do some desperate dead landsing by the looks. Yep. Sacking those deserts. Come on, good draw. Swamp is not what we would consider a good draw. Hit our opponent for a few. Untaps. Untaps. Sack a servo. Scry. Uh, we'll keep growing rights. Play the swamp. Pass the turn. Growing rights isn't insane, but it does let us dig for a creature, which is helpful. That's the main benefit of growing rights here. What do you got, opponent? Cycles a desert. And passes. Okay. Well, go attacking. Opponent's last card's fatal push. I guess we should have sacked that to scry, technically. Ugh. Well, maybe. We'll see. Untaps. Untaps. Takes two down to 11. So we play growing rights. Go digging. Take a golden guardian. Play golden guardian. Pass, flip growing rights. And I guess we just do this now? Fight a servo. Sack guardian. And make a 4-4. Four, four. And we get to scry. Forest to the bottom. And we're back on track with the gold forge garrison. Come on, no whammies, no whammies. I don't know what our opponent's big payoff is, but there's got to be something. You don't do all this ramping if you don't have some plan for winning the game. Opponent passes. Yep, we'll untap. Ixalan's binding, not super helpful here. Go attacking, hit our opponent. Untaps, untaps. Yep, takes three. Well, sack a servo. Land to the bottom. Pass the turd. Get a servo. I mean, I guess it's probably approach of the second suns they're looking for, would be my guess. And that could still just get us if they draw it. Ixalan's binding. Going after our hidden stockpile? 
All right, fair. We can just binding it back, though. Opponent passes. We'll make a 4-4 four, four. <laughs> with our two flip lands. Untap. Draw. Another land. Hmm. We'll go to combat. Attack with everything. Opponent untaps. Untaps. Takes four. Ixalan's binding. Hit the Ixalan's binding. Get back in stockpile. Sack a servo. Go scrying. Uh. Yeah, I guess we'll keep it. Play the land. Pass the turn. I mean, our opponent has to draw something this turn or they're dead. Golems? Are the golems dead? And our post scoops it up! Gollum's getting the job done! Oh my goodness! Goldforge Garrison through the graveyard hate! We just ground it out, and that was a game that the math betrayed us in the start. Oh man, I wish I knew what our opponent was doing. I mean, I'm sure we want duresses. I'm guessing we want Lost Legacies for approach, but I don't even know. Masterminds acquisition? I don't know this deck list at all. I don't know what's going on. I'm assuming we don't want Fumigate, we don't want Walk the Plank, uh, we probably don't want Noxious Gear Hulk, we probably do want Ixalan's Binding, and maybe we go down a Chupacabra? And yeah, I guess we just <clears throat> try it like that, I guess. I'm not 100% sure what our opponent's deck's all about. Alright, um, huh, hand's slow. I think we're gonna keep it though, opponent's deck is also pretty slow. Deadlands for our opponent. Well, Foul Orchard, go. Gonti seems like it could be helpful here. At least to just, like, see what's going on in our opponent's deck. Forest. And passes. We'll play Evolving Wilds. Pass the turn. Opponent. Oasis. Jeez, that is some painful deserts. Crack Evolving Wilds. Grab our planes. Now we wouldn't even mind another Evolving Wilds. Journey to Eternity. Well, play Hidden Stockpile. Play Foul Orchard. Pass the turn. Next turn we get to take... Alright, Appetite takes down Hidden Stockpile. Well, next time we get to take... Next turn we get to take a peek with Gonti. Unless our opponent has Discard. Man, so many deserts. Really hoping we get to resolve Gonti. Oh, this mana base. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. Oh, no. No, not... Uh, ooh. Mastermind's Acquisition. Spicy. Spicy, spicy, painful and spicy. So my guess would be they tutored up our promise, but it's really hard to say for sure. Play the forest. We are just going to run out Ganti. Oh lordy. Those are some options. Scarab God, pull from tomorrow. Hour of promise. Huh. I don't know what to take here. I'm not sure. Yeah, let's take pull from tomorrow. Also, probably a one of. I guess our opponent could have been tutoring up Scarab God. Scarab God's scary until we find Ixalan's Binding. Still guessing it was probably our promise, though. Yep, there's our promise. Opponent gets some lands. Well, let's journey. Hope for no disasters. Play Foul Orchard. Get in with Gonti. And pass the turn. Come on, no Ixalan's Binding. If you got removal, use normal removal. <laughs> Phone it, getting in. Four, two. Their land tutoring, they had to get basic, so they couldn't get Field of Ruins and other actually helpful lands. Utility lands. Well, there's the Scavenger Grounds. And more Hour of Promise. Good God. Goodness gracious. Okay. Well, now we really need a Field of Ruins. Pretty quick here. Opponent gets Field of Ruins. Jeez, opponent's got lots of goodies. Oh, play the Swamp. Play Golden Guardian. Man, if they didn't have that Scavenger Grounds in hand, we could just double flip and it would be insane. But since they have Scavenger Grounds, <clears throat> gonna be kinda challenging. Opponent. <laughs> Cycling a desert. Yep. Opponent. Jeez, getting frisky. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> Alright, no attacks. Opponent passes. Well, let's play Seeker Squire. Go exploring. Ixalan's binding to the graveyard. Play Foul Orchard. And pass the turn, pass the turn. Opponent. Gonna draw a million cards. That's a big old pull from Tomorrow's. Good gracious. This deck is playing at least two pull from Tomorrow's. I don't know what's going on. 
I do not know what's happening. Drowned Catacombs. Well, opponent's got to have unlimited action now. Gift of Paradise. Okay. More Hour of Promises. Yep. Opponent. Passing. Well, play Evolving Wilds. Pass the turn. I think it's going to be our turn to pull from tomorrow's. Another land for our opponent. Still not 100% sure what this deck's overall plan is. Other than playing lots of crazy lands. Here comes something huge. Battle at the bridge. Um, huh. Okay. Fatal push. Good lord. Okay. Well, that's not ideal. We take 10 from the zombies. Huh. Interesting turn. Down to 6. Well, crack evolving wilds. Grab a planes. And we will pull from tomorrow's X5. Discard. We have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Hmm. We need to stay alive, obviously. Let's discard Razaketh. Untap. Duress our opponent. So there goes Gonti. Yep. Hand is basically nothing. We'll play the forest. Play Arbor Back Stomper. Go up to 11. Opponent's going to draw a card. Yep. Play Merfolk Branch Walker. Hidden Stockpile to the graveyard. Pass the turn. And see what our opponent can do. Plays the Deadlands. Number a million. Cycles a desert. Doomfall, alright, there goes a branch walker. Opponent. Counters on the arbor back. <laughs> Counters on the arbor back. Yup. Gonna hit us to one. Okay. Thematic compass, out of cards again. Hmm. We'll play Liliana. Get back, arbor back. Play branch walker. Golden guardian in the graveyard. And pass the turn. The other problem for our opponent's gonna be, can they actually win this game without timing out? Kills Branch Walker. Alright, and yeah, they got us. I still have no idea what this deck is doing. I still have no idea. Maybe we want to leave in a Fumigate? I really am very confused as to what is happening in this deck. Very, very confused. I mean, I guess we leave in a Fumigate. Maybe go down one Growing Rights and try it like that. So I think the big challenge for our opponent's going to be they're under five minutes, so they just, they have to not only win, they have to win quickly. Ugh. Yeah, I think we got a mulligan. All right, we'll keep this. Not an exciting hand. We will keep Hidden Stockpile. I'll play Sun Petal Grove, pass the turn. Opponent. Desert, number one. I'll play Evolving Wilds, pass the turn. This is a little clunkier than we'd like, but... Tap land. We'll crack Evolving Wilds. Grab a Swamp. Play Seeker Squire. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll keep growing rights. Play the Forest. Pass the turn. Blooming Marsh for our opponent. And passes. Well, get in with Squire. Play Hidden Stockpile. Play Field of Ruin. Sack Squire. Scry, get a Servo. Uh, always with the appetite. Well, put on top. That is kind of a blowout that our opponent had that, unfortunately. Tap land for our opponent. Oh, the appetite. That was brutal. Well, play Seeker Squire. Go exploring. Play Merfolk Branch Walker. Go exploring. Play Evolving Wilds. Pass the turn. Opponent has a Fatal Push. Unfortunately, we don't have an Ixalan's Binding for a Scarab God. Thankfully, our opponent does not have a land for a Scarab God. Well, let's crack, grab a Plains, play a Swamp, play Yeheni, Undying Partisan, go attacking, hit our opponent for three, and run out Growing Rights. Find uh, Razaketh, yikes. Journey in two lands to the bottom. Razaketh is still a bit away from really doing much. Unless we find a way to flip Growing Rights. Tap land. Ugh, still very scared of a Scarab God. Opponent. Kills Yeheni. And passes. Well, get in with Seeker Squire. Hit our opponent. Play Hidden Stockpile. 
Sagseeker Squire, Scry. Ugh. I think we actually got to keep it. That is another temporary answer to the Scarab God. Why we're waiting to find our real answers. We really want an Ixalan's Binding. That's the that's the big one. Our promise for our opponent. Yep. Get some lands, including Scavenger Grounds. So we draw Fumigate. We sack our Servo to Scry. Hmm. I think we got to go bottom, unfortunately. I think we actually, we need to hit an Ixalan's Binding for Scarab God. Blow up the tokens, pass the turn. That's the easiest way we lose this game, is our opponent just having an unchecked Scarab God. That's a way our opponent can win quickly enough before they actually run out of time. Choops gives us a one-shot solution. Ugh, Carnage Tyrant. Huh, okay. Well, Gonti's not bad. Let's Gonti. Go digging in our opponent's deck. Doomfall could be helpful. Sack our servo. Arborback Stomper. I guess on top. Pass the turn. So now our opponent has to get rid of Gonti before Carnage Tyrant can take over. And they have to get another creature so Carnage Tyrant doesn't just lose to Doomfall. Gift to Paradise. Okay. And... Hour of Devastation. Yep. Well, this Doomfall is going to be important. Opponent hits us to 15. We draw Stomper. So we Field of Ruin, get rid of Scavenger Grounds to trigger our Hidden Stockpile. Grab a Swamp. And then Doomfall the Carnage Tyrant. And pass the turn. Still a little scared of Scarab God. Arch of Araska. This is going to be close. Do they have Scarab God? Profane Procession. That's not actually that good. That's just so slow. Mastermind's Acquisition to the sideboard. I wonder what our opponent could be tutoring. Opponent passes. We draw. Field of Ruin. We'll play Field of Ruin. Play Arbor Backstomper. Go up to 20. Get in with the Servo. Hit our opponent. Sack the Servo. Forest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, I guess to the bottom for now. Pass the turn. Well, what did our opponent get from their sideboard? That's the big question. Is it something that can win the game super quickly? Because they're down to 49 seconds. Opponent passing. Well, go attacking. Hit our opponent. Um, Profane Procession is an issue. Let's sack our servo. Go scrying. Swamp to the bottom. Pass the turn. Get a servo. All right, opponent, huge pull from tomorrow. Can they find a way to win fast enough, though? Cascading Cataracts. Doomfall. All right. Take something from our hand. And I think we're getting the timeout win. Opponent's at three, two, one. Just did not play fast enough. And that does it. Wow, well, that was not the beautiful win we were hoping for, but we'll take it. Man, we've had some long games with this deck. Jeez. Alright, budget magic time. We are taking the golden journey <laughs> in standard, and this hand is close. I mean, we have a lot of lands in this deck. We're playing 25 lands, so we should curve out. We have Yeheni, which is nice if we get a... Journey to Eternity, we can get the Quick Flip, and we got the Golden Guardian. So it seems like a reasonable enough hand to keep. Field of Ruin fixes for white, worst case. So Swamp, go. Opponent, Mountain, and passing. Ugh, all the Golden Guardians. Well, Seeker Squire. Wouldn't mind just exploring into a land, because we would like to actually be able to play Golden Guardians on time. All right, that's a land. That's good. Pass the turn. Opponent, Cinder Barons, and passes. Ugh. Razakath, a smidge expensive for our taste. Well, play a Henny. The only good news about this is if nothing goes insanely wrong, we can use a Henny as a way to flip a Golden Guardian. Attack, attack, hit our opponent. Come on, no Magma Sprays. Slash Shocks. Yeah. All right, there's Magma Sprays. So sack Seeker Squire. That's going to make the plan of flipping Golden Guardian a little slower, a little harder. 
Dragon Skull Summit for our opponent. And PNLR. Yup. Well, we're actually still pretty fine with just hitting lands here. Opponent passes. Well, there's a land. So play Golden Guardian. And pass the turn. See what our opponent's got. Opponent. Land. And Chandra Torch of Defiance. Taken down. At our Golden Guardian. Boo. Well, we're gonna sack it. Eh. Less than ideal. And now we gotta deal with a Chandra. Opponent. Getting in for one. Down to 19. Oh, play Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin a land. Grab a Plains. Play Hidden Stockpile. And let's just pass. Get a Servo. Deadlands for our opponent. This is going to be interesting. Adds mana. Ugh. Glorybringer. Oh, wow. Deadlands. That is aggressive. Well, Zakia Henny, Scry. Foul Orchard. Ugh. Ugh, ugh, ugh. We want an untap land, but we need a land, period. I guess we put it on top. So Yeheni down. And Siphoner for our opponent. Yep. Gets in for two. So we take it. Untap. Attack Chandra. Opponent trades. That's fine. So play Golden Guardian. Play Foul Orchard. Pass the turn. Get a servo. Keep the pressure on. We have worst case Noxious Gear Hulk for next turn. We haven't found a journey to eternity yet. Opponent does not get to draw an extra card. Plays a mountain. Takes up Chandra. Down to 15. There's the glory bringer. That's a good one for our opponent. I'm assuming they're gonna attack and exert and kill our golden guardian again. Never ending. Yup. So we sack golden guardian to scry. Foul orchard. <sighs> to the, I think to the bottom. To the bottom. Yeah, our opponent's removal is lined up really well with what we're trying to do. Down to nine. Well, we get to Noxious Gear Hulk. Kill Glorybringer. Gain some life. Play Evolving Wilds. Crack Evolving Wilds. For servo action. Grab a Plains. And see what our opponent's got. We're actually not that far away from hardcasting this Razaketh. Opponent gets to draw an extra card, unfortunately. Mountain. They just have every glory bringer. They do. Takes up Chandra. Down to 11. Oh, Liliana. All right. Well, Liliana get back glory bringer. Holy. Holy, holy, holy. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of glory bringers. Opponent. Gonna get in. Exert. Ah, uh, it's miserable. We have just not found our our good cards this game. Yep. Kills our Noxious Gear Hulk. We were close. Well, we're going to kill Glint Sleeve Siphoner. And I'm not sure what our plan is here. Draw something. Opponents had a lot of power. That Chandra. I mean, we can Ixalan's Binding Chandra. I don't feel like this is a long-term pathway to victory, though. So get rid of Chandra. Yeah, we've just... That's the second Glory Bringer. That's the one. When your opponent plays two Glory Bringers, your odds of winning are very low. And there's third Glory Bringer for next turn. And I think we just gotta draw a Fumigate to have any realistic shot. Opponent gets in with the PNLR. Yeah, opponent's draw. Super good. Super good. Opponent. Tapping. Thinking. Ether Sphere Harvester. Tapping. Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Well, Fumigate? No, sir. And we will scoop it up. Yeah, opponent just had exactly enough removal for that to go well for them. So, with what our opponent's doing, bring in Ixalan's Binding. Probably have to bring in Duresses, I guess. And figure out how to make these fit. So, go down a Growing Rights. Go down... Maybe we gotta go down one Golden Guardian. We kinda Golden Guardian flooded that game. Um, go down a... Maybe a walk the plank. Maybe we go three duress. And we probably gotta go down Razaketh, I guess. Maybe we want Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. Deadeye Tracker seems fine with the Liliana. It probably is worth it. Maybe we bring in the trackers. Ugh, how do we make all this stuff fit? Ugh. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Maybe go one tracker. And alright, cut a seeker squire. Try it like that. We're on the play. And I guess we try this. Lot of lot of action. 
Not sure how quickly we will be able to cast everything. So, land go. Tap land for our opponent. We draw a swamp. We'll play the forest, run out Seeker Squire. Go exploring. All right, Evolving Wilds is okay. It does get us white mana eventually. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to crack it before we play the hidden stockpile. Opponent, Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Yup, passes. Well, get in with Seeker Squire. Play a Swamp, run out our Walk the Plank, and pass the turn. Mana is smidge clunky. Opponent, passing. Field of Ruin's not bad. Let's get in with our Seeker Squire. Hit our opponent. And I think we're gonna do the Field of Ruin trick to get white mana, so Field of Ruin, Field of Ruin, the Canyon Slew. Grab a Plains and Hidden Stockpile. Start making some tokens. And this gives us a free token next turn with our Chupacabra as well. See if our opponent has Phoenix. Hopefully the answer is no. All right, there's the land. Opponent passing. Okay, we get a Sun Petal Grove. Well, let's go attacking. Hit our opponent. Play Evolving Wilds. Crack Evolving Wilds. Got to do this first because we're going to play Seeker Squire. Grab a Swamp. Play Seeker Squire. Explore into... Oh, yeah, we'll keep Liliana. Ugh. Question is if we run out Deadeye Tracker... What could our opponent have that would ruin that plan? I think we do. Run out at Eye Tracker. Pass the turn. Get a servo. Opponent does know about the Liliana. Opponent probably wants a sweeper. Mountain. Glory Bringer is not that good here. Alright, they do have a sweeper. Um. Yeah, I mean, we're keeping Liliana, so we'll let it go. And Dusk Legion Zealot for our opponent. Well, one, two, three, four, five. Play Liliana. Take up Liliana, make a zombie. Play Sun Petal Grove. Sack the zombie. Well, we're gonna keep Journey on top. Journey is one of our best ways of winning if this game goes long and our opponent keeps tapping out. Dusk Legion Zealot. Yup. Land. I mean, if our opponent taps out, we can get down this journey and really go on the grind. Opponent gets in at Liliana. Oh yeah, we'll take one. Keep the servo around, just in case they have, like, Vraska's Contempt and they're trying to trick us into blocking. All right, opponent's passing. This does mean we're not going to journey yet. What are we going to do? Let's tick up Liliana, mill some lands, get in with our servo, sack our servo, foul orchard to the bottom, and... Yeah, I don't really want a Chupacabra, a Dusk Legion Zealot, when we know our opponent has Phoenixes and Glory Bringers... So make a servo, pass the turn. So if we ever get our opponent tapped out, we should be able to flip this journey, and that's gonna be a lot of value. All right, scavenger grounds, eh, that is good, but not wholly devastating. Opponent, gonna magma spray our zombie. Oh, that was a mistake. We should have, uh, should have sacked it to scry. Oops, opponent's going attacking. Well, we will block. Yeah, that was a mistake. We gave up a free scry there. Opponent. Liliana of their own. Well, opponents tapped down. They could have Magma Spray. They're going to reanimate Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Well, let's see what we draw. Another journey. We'll make a zombie. We got to go for it. Journey. Sack the zombie. Flip. Planes to the bottom. So not full value by any stretch. Opponent gets to draw a card, which is bad. We might still be in pretty bad shape here. Opponent, thinking over their options. Another Dusk Legion Zealot. Down to 11. Land. Mags a zombie. Gonna go attacking. Yep, gets an energy. I think we gotta take it for now. Liliana down to 3. And PNLR. Still leaving up Scavenger Grounds mana. Yep. So, opponent passes. We draw Duress. Well, let's duress our opponent. Take the Hour of Glory. So opponent's got nothing in hand. <sighs> we could try to reanimate, but we can't reanimate anything that good. We can reanimate, like, Branch Walker. I think we just have to tick up Liliana, play Chupacabra, kill Siphoner, sack our Servo to Scry, Field of Ruin. 
Hmm. I think we're going to keep it on top. It forces our opponent to use that scavenger grounds. So we pass, get a servo. Unfortunately, our opponent might be winning the Liliana battle. There's one of the ether hubs we knew about. Makes a zombie. Mills, nothing too good. Opponent can just like attack and pump a lot, which is bad to kill our Liliana. One, two, three. Yeah, they can just pump, 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 leave up scavenger grounds. I wouldn't be surprised if that was their plan. Thopter, getting in at our Lily. Ooh, interesting. And the zombie. Well, we will trade. Opponent's gonna do the pumping. We still have to find a way to get through our opponent's Liliana. Although, it will get easier once we have our graveyard unlocked for this Adsel. So there goes our Liliana. We trade zombies. Opponent passes. So we start by playing Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin, the scavenger grounds. Opponent going to nuke the graveyards. Yup. So let's journey to eternity on Chupacabra. Attack Liliana. See if our opponent blocks. Opponent takes it. And yeah, we'll just take a servo past the turd. So we can keep getting back Chupacabra. Will that be enough? I think we need to draw something else to go with it. Opponent going to make a zombie. Ooh, Gonti in the graveyard. We've gone through two scavenger grounds, though. So that's a big vote in our favor. There's the ether hub. Opponent. Attacks, 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 attacks. All right, so we'll just sack Chupacabra. Uh, keep the untapped. Kill the flyer. Opponent. Gonna do something tricky. Okay, sacks the flyer so Chupacabra can't block. All right, that's fine-ish. We get to scry. Come on, action. Ooh, second stockpile. One, two, one, two, three, four. We don't have the mana to play it and to Atsil, but making two servos instead of one is nice. We probably gotta keep it, I guess. Yeah, let's keep it on top. Block. Yeah, I think we gotta keep one servo around. Because we got to make sure we have something to sack next turn. Opponent. All right, passing. Well, let's Chupacabra at Liliana. Opponent going to trade with PNLR. All right. Man, I wish we had one more mana. I think we're going to wait on the hidden stockpile. I think we're just going to get our servo. Reanimate Chupacabra. All right, opponent plays a swamp. That's not a scavenger grounds. See what our opponent does with Liliana. Opponent, getting frisky. Well, let's reanimate our Chupacabra. Kill a zombie. And we'll just block and take two. Yep, down to 15. Wow, opponent cashes in the Liliana to use their Gonti. Well, we do have some good cards that our opponent could potentially hit. There are good cards in our deck that could be hit by this Gonti that would be pretty scary. What did our opponent find? Another Liliana? Uh, so many Lilianas! That is annoying. Yep. Five mana. Arbor Backstomper. This is actually not bad for us. This might be good for us. So opponent gains some life. And passes. So we are going to upkeep Scry. Sack Chupacabra. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Evolving Wilds to the bottom. Ooh, there's Ixalan's Binding. All right, so I think we're gonna take a somewhat slightly risky line. We're going to Ixalan's Binding to get rid of Liliana's forever, play the second Hidden Stockpile, so we get double servos, and pass the turn. Now we're just trusting that this Chupacabra is gonna be enough. Opponent cycles. If our opponent can find a Glory Bringer this turn, it falls apart. Oh no, really? Chandra, well that's still bad. Takes up Chandra, a braid. Can kill a servo, I guess, if they want. Kills a servo, sure. Wow, no attacks, opponent passes. Okay, playing some defense. Well, let's upkeep, actually, how do we want to do this? Yeah, let's upkeep Scry, sacking a servo. Foul Orchard to the top. We don't mind an extra mana here. Play Foul Orchard. Pass the turn. Get some servos. 
So we do have to... Uh, we do have to beat this Chandra before it ultimates. Another... If they have a third Scravenger Grounds, that's pretty bad. Glint Sleeve Siphoner for our opponent. Gonna cast it. Yep. Opponent. No attacks. Well, if they got a braid, they got a braid. Rihanna, er, not a braid, uh, magma spray. Get back, Chupacabra. Kill Arborback Snomper. Hopefully they didn't draw magma spray. Because we don't have enough mana to sack at the moment. All right, Veraska's Contempt. On the Stomper, interesting. Okay, well, opponent passes. Uh, now what? Do we upkeep Scry? Let's upkeep Scry. Sacking Chupacabra. Sun Petal Grove. One, two, three, four, five. To the bottom. Whew. All right, that's Ixalan's Binding. So we will Ixalan's Binding Chandra. And we might be doing it. Planeswalker down. Because now we have... Now we have Chupacabra to deal with future glory bringers, and we're making two servos a turn to deal with our opponent's ground force. All right, opponent does get to draw an extra card, which is not ideal. Two cards in hand, plays a land. Angrath, uh, not as scary as some of the other planeswalkers. We can deal with Angrath. Hits us for two. And I think we still have one more Ixalan's binding somewhere. Opponent, gonna get in. Well, we will double block this. Actually, we will block with everything. We're not going to take a chance. We're going to just massively overblock with our servos. Make sure we kill this Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Yep. And I think we might actually be in pretty good shape now. Opponent passes. Um, let's just draw. Ooh, one, two, three, four, five. Interesting. Interesting. Well, let's sack a servo. I guess we should have just upkeeped it. Ooh, boy. Another Choops. Keep Choops on top. Uh, we're gonna have to discard, though, aren't we? Hmm. Yeah, I think we messed this turn up. Yeah, we should not have scried. We should have just let the servos go. Because the risk is glory bringer. Yeah, that was definitely a mistake. Hmm. Yeah, sloppy. Ugh. Yeah, I guess we're just gonna lose hidden stockpile, unfortunately. Yup, yup, yup. Should have done that very differently. That one mana... We value valued the stockpile trigger too highly. Yep, there goes hidden stockpile. We drop to 11. Opponent. Big attack. Interesting. Well, block, 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 block. Reanimate Chupacabra to kill Gonti. Take zero. And now we just got to beat through this Angrath. Yep. Opponent passes. Well, let's upkeep. Well, ugh. We need to attack Angrath. So no upkeep, Scry. We draw Chupacabra. We attack everything Angrath. We sack Chupacabra. We'll keep Gonti on top. Pass the turn. Get some tokens. I think we got there. I think we got it assembled. We discard Chupacabra, number two. Down to nine. Unless our opponent can, like, burn us out somehow. Well, we need to get back a Chupacabra, because we... We need a threat to beat through this Angrath. So Chupacabra coming back. We haven't drawn a Golden Guardian either. Yep, no upkeep scry. Everything at Angrath. Opponent found removal. Harness Lightning. So ch sack Chupacabra. Fumigate. Ugh. To the bottom. Angrath down to one. We get some servos. Pass the dirt. Takes up. We discard Gonti. Down to seven. This is actually kind of helping us, because Gonti we'd rather have in the graveyard. Siphoner for our opponent. Yup. Two cards in hand. Opponent passing. Well, let's reanimate Gonti. Take Aethersphere Harvester. Untap. Attack Angrath. Oh, yeah, we gotta make sure it's dead. Attack Angrath. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Play Aethersphere Harvester. Play Forest. Pass the turn. Opponent's going to abrade Aethersphere. Yep. Well, I guess we do this now. Get back, Chupacabra. So our opponent doesn't get to draw an extra card. Pass the turn. And our opponent scoops it up. Oh, we got there. We got there. This is a long one. 
Uh, yeah, this is going to be interesting. This might come down to time. There is a pretty realistic shot that it comes down to time. Should we change anything? Uh, I guess we should probably have the walk the plank. The chupacabra lock was great. And that was through a sweeper and a graveyard hate spell. So, I mean, I don't know if we're going to win this match, but that was impressive. Let's go down one more squire. Let's, yeah, let's try it like that. We got to play quick, so we aren't the one that times out. All right, opponent's on the play. Eh, we'll keep this. It's a good hand for not losing quick, at least. Tap land for our opponent. Well, let's swamp and duress. Liliana, Hour of Glory, two siphoners. So take Liliana, pass the turn. We can kill the first siphoner. The second one might be an issue. There's siphoner. Yep. Opponent passes. We'll play the swamp. Kill the siphoner. Looks like our opponent's gonna get to draw a card off the second siphoner, unfortunately. Mountain. Siphoner number two. Yup. Play a foul orchard. Pass the turn. Ugh. Ugh. Not good. Not good. Siphoner doing its thing. Drawing our opponent a free card. Deadlands. Opponent. Gets in with Siphoner. Hmm. Let's play Branch Walker. Go exploring. Opponent has a Magma Spray. We will play Foul Orchard. Pass the turn. So opponent doesn't get to draw a card this time. Hopefully they don't have a huge follow-up. They cycle. Opponent, no card draw. What's the follow-up? Dusk Legion Zealot. Deadlands. Opponent gets in. Uh, I think we're going to have to binding this. Yeah. Ugh. Not ideal, because this leaves us open to all kinds of bad things, but binding on the siphoner. We can't have our opponent just drawing an extra card every turn. Pass the turn. We have drawn all lands all the time. Now if they can play a Planeswalker or a Glorybringer, we're suddenly in really bad shape. Hopefully they're just drawing removal and such. No Glorybringer. That's good. Opponent hits us. Ugh. Oh, they drew it. Well, come on, Ixalan's binding. You can do it, deck. Doomfall, yeah, our hand's awful. Well, play Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin, a Deadlands. I think we're in trouble. Get a Plains. Play Stockpile. Pass the turn. We've just hit it. We've hit too many, too many lands this game. We've hit all lands all the time. Opponent takes up Chandra. No attacks. Something else. PNLR. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Well, upkeep scry, sack of servo. We need action. Sun petal grove, even more lands. Good god. Oh my god almighty. Well, this is not how we drew it up. The ultra flood plan is not going to get this done. The percentage of lands on the top of our deck has been pretty absurd. Chandra is to ultimate mode, and our opponent also. Wow. Yeah. Yup, yup, yup. Gets in, hits us, can't do anything about it, and we're yeah. Well, this is the nightmare. The nightmare, the nightmare. Just every land on top of our deck. Oh my god, another one. And walk the plank, and it's too late, and we will scoop it up. Well, uh, just for the count on the way out the door, we scried two to the bottom, so that's 19 cards we saw. Uh, two lands on the bottom. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve of 19. Huh, <sighs> that's, that is a pretty high percentage. Yikes. Well, we got to see the power of the deck in game two. That's something. So why don't we learn this week about Golden Journey in Standard. And overall, we finished three and two, and good God did we play some grindy games. We played some quick matches. We lost really quickly to Aggro once. We won really quickly against Vampires once. We just insane draws where we're flipping our stuff and getting back Chupacabras. But then we played just some of the longest, grindiest, craziest games you could imagine, where we're reanimating stuff every turn. Our opponent's playing Planeswalkers and ramping, and some of those games were just absolutely absurd so i feel like this deck showed its power to grind with the grindiest most powerful deck chandras and glory bringers and all that stuff we could grind with those once we got going so i was very impressed by that aspect of the deck the power level is very high we do have 
a problem where if we get a slow draw, the all Golden Guardian, Journey to Eternity, kind of clunky slow draw, we can get run over by aggro decks that just curve out Bomb at Courier, Scrap Heap, Scrounger. That was an issue in some matchups. But once we get going, the deck is very hard to stop. It is super grindy. It is really fun. So I was impressed by the power of Journey to Eternity in specific. Like with Hidden Stockpile as a consistent sack outlet, it undoes a lot of the trouble in the problem problems that you have with Journey to Eternity, where it can be challenging to actually find a window to get it on a creature and not get blown out by the removal that doesn't cause a creature to die. Ixalan's Bindings, Cast Outs, Veraska's Contempts, all that kind of stuff ruins a plan really hardcore. So, but with a sack outlet like Hidden Stockpile, it's a lot easier to get it to flip, and the combination of Golden Guardian with Journey to Eternity was very powerful. We did some really cool things being able to flip with the Golden Guardian, fight things to get the flip and all around the synergy was strong surprisingly strong but like I said we can get run over by aggro we also just have some clunkiness like being a budget deck we're playing for evolving wilds we're playing for foul orchards instead of blooming marsh so we do have Taplan City sometimes, where we just play so many Taplans, have to play a little bit off curve, which is a little bit painful because we can be slow anyway. So having to play a Taplan instead of getting down our Golden Guardian on turn four or something can be a really big problem, but the Explorer creatures help smooth that out. So I feel like this shell definitely has a lot of potential. How it actually ends up, I'm not sure. I think Journey to Eternity is definitely the all-star, and Golden Guardian was better than I thought it was be because I thought Golden Guardian was just absolutely unplayable and I'm not going to say it's like the best card in standard or it's breaking the deck but if you build around it and can support flipping it it is pretty powerful having a land that's four mana to make a four four is really strong and just adding the two extra mana is pretty relevant well we have so many mana sinks in this deck we're to reanimate stuff with Adzel, cast big things sack a bunch of stuff to scry and do other things in the same turn so all around I think the deck is upgradable especially Especially in the mana base, and it is really fun to play. So if you like grindy mid-range style decks, you want to take advantage of some of the new flip lands, and you want to give Golden Guardian a shot. I think this is a deck that you'll probably enjoy. I don't know if it's at the top of most competitive as far as budget magic decks we've had in standard since Rivals of Ixalan, but I think it's definitely competitive enough that you can win some games with it and have a ton of fun along the way. So anyway, that's been Golden Journey for standard. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.